looks like we are live. We're going to go ahead and let a few people get jump in here. This is What's Cooking Wednesday Live. I'm Nick from Hasty Bake, and uh, we're excited to be doing this today. This is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully it's not too loud out here on the patio. As you've probably known from other videos, we got some road construction going on. It is windy as all get out, but it's a really gorgeous spring day. It's also in Oklahoma. So today what we're going to be doing is uh, is smoky Philly cheesesteaks. Now I say that loosely because I'm not from Philly and I don't know a traditional smoky uh, a traditional Philly cheesesteak like those guys do. But I'm going to show you our riff on them, which we had a lot of fun getting on the um, Hasty Bake today. So we've got some people tuning in hopefully, and this is what we're going to go ahead and do. We're using the Hasty Bake griddle today. Jennifer, you can pay it over and show our Hasty Bake griddle. So we make these here in-house. They're wonderful griddles. They're very, very heavy. Uh, I mean, they hold amazing heat. I'm going to show you what temperature this is at right now. We're about 500 degrees. I like to get these griddles between 400 and 500 degrees when you're using them. I'm going to go ahead and drop it down just a hair, maybe try to keep it around 475. But the reason we want to do that is you go too low and you're going to end up overcooking your meat without getting a really good meat contact to, uh, to metal. If you go too high, you're going to end up burning it and you're not actually going to get it cooked. So we kind of like that happy medium, about 450, 475 with a great temperature for a griddle. What we're going ahead and doing today is, uh, like I said, smoky Philly cheesesteaks. So what I've done ahead of time, because I don't want you to have to watch this whole time while I'm prepping, is we've taken onions and green peppers and we diced them up, we seasoned them a little bit, and I put them in a pan. Then I took the meat that we're going to use, which is nice choice grade ribeye steaks, uh, and we seasoned those up as well. And what I actually did about an hour ago was I put these on the hasty bake to smoke at a very low temperature, around 170 degrees, about as cold as I can get that hasty bake to run out of a normal load of charcoal. And I let these things smoke for probably about 30 or 40 minutes. So it didn't do a full cook on the meat. The meat is still very, very, very rare. But it got a good amount of smoke into the vegetables. It got a good amount of smoke into the meat. And was able to capture all that so that when we put this on the griddle, it will stay in there as we slice it up. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull these steaks out. And we're going to start slicing them because we don't want to cook them whole on the griddle. So we're just going to go ahead and cut off all the fat. Now, trimming these up is going to be a little harder when they're semi-cooked. Make sure you're using a good surface that you're not going to be putting post-cooked meat on, pre-cooked, so we're going to keep it on this side. i got another board we'll serve out of. But we're going to go ahead and try to slice these fairly thin. Now, what you can do, if you like, is you can smoke these way ahead of time, either the day before or earlier that day, and then go ahead and put them in the refrigerator. They'll tighten up and they'll be a lot easier to slice. We just didn't have time to do that today, so we're going to go this route. But you want to slice this ribeye about as thin as you can do with a normal knife. Got any questions so far? We got okay over there. Just everybody wanting a griddle. Everyone wanting a griddle. It's a good season to do a griddle too. Now, one of the reasons I love the griddle is it's not just a breakfast tool. Now, I do love firing up my griddle on a Saturday morning with the kids running around and cooking breakfast outside. That's a lot of fun. But, uh, but a lot of people who buy the griddle don't realize you can use it for so many other things. So you can do stir fries on it, you can do fried rice on it, you can do uh, curry dishes on it, you can prep stew stuff on it, you can do things like what we're doing right here, which is flat top chili, Philly cheese steaks. Those are real easy to do. So I encourage you, if you don't have a griddle, go pick one up because they're amazing. And if you do have a griddle, start branching out. You don't always have to put bacon and eggs on it. You don't always have to do smash burgers, although we're in Oklahoma, we love smash burgers. You can do simple things just like this. Again, we're trimming off the side of that fat because we don't want a whole bite of this fat. Now, if I was eating this steak, that fat would definitely stay on, but the fact that we're slicing it up, we're going to go ahead and pull that fat off because I want as much meat contact to that metal as possible to get a really good brown on it. Now you, when you're doing something like this on the griddle, you're definitely not going to be cooking your steaks medium rare like you normally would. They're going to end up being a little bit more well done. As a result, there's kind of two methods of thought. You can go ahead and buy choice steak because if you're not going to be cooking that high-end steak and really enjoying the texture of it, then why would you pay that high dollar? Or other people say, well, you got extra fat in that prime steak, so 
So it's going to end up making your meat a little bit juicier. I'm in the boat where I like to use the cheaper cut of meat. I think the fat at the, at the very end does make a difference, but we also have some butter on our rolls, and sometimes we put things like mayo or sweet cheese or something like that on it. So I don't think you necessarily need that fat period moisture. This is also a great thing to do when steaks go on sale. You also don't have to do ribeye, although ribeye is probably my favorite thing to do Philly cheese steaks out of. Flank steak works great, skirt steak works great. You know from past videos we're big fans of skirt steak, like for fajitas and things like that. This is very similar to how you're going to cut something for a fajita. This last steak done. And in case you're wondering, yes, it does kill me to take all the fat out of this thing. But I promise you the end result will be worth it. You don't want a big old gummy bite of fat when you're eating the sandwich. You want nice, consistent bites. Jeffrey asked how we clean the griddles. Um, I'm going to show you after. Uh, they're not hard to clean. Now, I think a lot of people overthink it. They think, well, you got to reseason it every time, or you're going to have to take it out, scrub it with a sponge, or put it in the dishwasher. You definitely don't need to do any of that. Now, I do maintenance like that probably every three or four months. I'll come out with a really good heavy coarse uh, scrubber. I'll use some cotton pads and scrub it good, uh, and I'll try to reseason it. But you definitely don't have to do that for your normal day to day. We're actually going to do the same process as deglazing a pan, and I'll show you at the very end because we're going to put some cheese on these cheese steaks and it is going to get that griddle really messy and that's a great opportunity for us to show you how to do it. So Jeffrey, stick around to the end and I'll show you about it. Now, the grain on ribeye runs kind of in a circular pattern. I try to rotate these steaks the best I can and continually cut against the grain. It's tender enough, it's not going to end up being real tough anyway. But it's always good practice if you have the opportunity and you can tell where the grain is, to go ahead and cut against the grain. Again, slicing these as thin as you can. They're going to cook very quick. We're not going to tempt them at all. You definitely can try, but when you're cutting something this thin, tempting it is really, really hard to do. And at the end of the day, we cooked these till they were probably about 100 degrees. By the time they spend a few minutes on that griddle, they're going to be well safe for us, so we're not real worried about that. What I'm going to start with on this griddle is my onions and my peppers. So these are pretty smoked. They got a great aroma on them. They got some good seasoning. The seasoning I'm using today is Cattleman's Grilled California Tri-Tip Seasoning. It's got some really coarse salt, really coarse garlic, some nice bell pepper. It's a great compliment on the meat and on the uh, on the onions and peppers. So we're going to go ahead and throw these ahead of time. But before I do, I still like to laser. I grill them sitting around 490, 500 degrees. I like being there. Now, I like a small layer of oil. You don't want oil pooled on this because the metal contact is what's going to give you your Maillard effect, the, the browning effect you get when you get that crust on your meat. So you don't want it to do an immediate stick. So I'm just going to do a real light dust of duck fat, one of our favorite fat oils to, to use around here. Just enough where there's no pooling, but it's going to be a little non stick. I need to go ahead and throw these off. Oh, that's nice. Chris Thomas wants to know where you got that beautiful cutting board. That beautiful cutting board? Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available here at the Tulsa Grill Store. We have somebody make it for us. Some of them are emblazoned with the Hasty Bake logo, some of them are. They got a nice juice grip grain. They're wonderful cutting boards. They make them in different woods, too. So if you have a favorite wood, like if you have it. If not, uh, the person we buy them from can do custom work. What I like to do here is just move these onions around around and just kind of get a nice even coating. You don't want them piled up on each other. You want as much metal contact as you can to get that browning effect on all your vegetables. Now while those are browning, I want to tell you how I set up this grill. This is the Hasty Bake Legacy 132. It's our stainless steel model. And if you can get the camera around here, I know it's a little tight. But I've got this thing just a hair above the bake position with lump charcoal underneath it. Can you get down in there and see where we're at? I like to keep it right around that bake position. Now the neat thing about this is 
normally on a griddle with a gas grill, you're, you're set to what you can. You turn it as high as you can, and you're lucky if you can get up to 400 degrees. You can easily excel 400 degrees on our griddle because you can adjust your charcoal. Now, when you're adjusting the height of the charcoal, it's as fine tuning as you would with a gas knob. You can get it down real far and put down in your two or 300 range. You can get it right up underneath and get that thing to 700 degrees if you wanted to. So that's how I like to set it up. Good amount of browning on here. I'm going to go a little bit more, and then we're going to go ahead and throw the meat on. Some people like their vegetables, their peppers, and their onions a little bit more al dente. If you do, you go ahead and put your meat on earlier. I like mine to kind of be a little bit softer. I feel like they give a good texture to the meat. I want a little bit of a bite to them, but nothing fresh and crunchy. I definitely want to cook down, and I definitely want all that oil to soak up and make those vegetables all the flavor. We're going to continue to let that go. Now, if you have a small amount that you're doing, you can put a steak plate or come in here with a big spatula and press down hard, and you'll get that contact you're looking for. And if you notice the surface of that metal getting a little dry, which it can happen because that oil soaks up into the vegetables, feel free to come back in and just give them one more little pat of oil. And then when we do the flip on them, that oil starts to brown the other side. What are we doing on the questions? Okay. Just everybody talking about how much they love their griddle. Awesome. The griddle that we make here at Hasty Bank is really well designed. It's got X bracing underneath it, so there's no way this thing is going to warp on you. Doesn't matter how hot you cook on it, it's not going to warp. It's nice and braced on the outside with a frame, so it holds everything in place really well. It's got these really nice, easy to use handles. They don't stay cold, but they don't get unbelievably hot with an ice glove. You can kind of move them around. And then it's angled, so as you're cooking and the oil starts to cool up, as long as your patio is level where your grill is set level, any excess fat and oil will drain down from the back into this catch basin on the front, making sure that you have good metal contact the entire time. And the best thing about this, when you're cooking it on a Legacy or on a Gourmet, where you can take your extra grill grate on, if it starts to get too hot or you just want to keep things warm, grab that handle, slide it right off the fire, and now you have ambient heat cooking instead of direct heat. Go ahead and give these a flip. Okay, when you take that extra grill grate out, the other option you have, which is nice, is if you do need to feed your fire, put a little extra charcoal in, you can toss it underneath and they'll get lit right away. I'm going to let these continue to cook, but you know, move them all to the side as they start to kind of render and reduce and get smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and bring my meat in. One wounded soldier on the ground. I'm going to spread this meat out as flat as I can, making sure everything is kind of trying to get some metal contact. hit this with one more layer of that cattleman's rub. Ben Allen wanted to know where you got your meat from. Uh, this meat was from Reesers locally. Buy it wherever you can get it right now. We, we can't be picky these days. We can't find it anywhere. A lot of times if the big box stores don't have it, you can try your smaller places. Uh, one of our local favorites is Birdco Meats here in Tulsa. Uh, it's a great restaurant, but they got a wonderful meat counter up here in Boston and 18th and down in Kings. Siggy's is another wonderful place that we get our meat from. It's out on 91st in Tulsa. Uh, there's Perry's Meat Market on Harvard Beach. There's tons of places around. We always encourage you to support those places. I know sometimes it's hard to go out of the way. Not as easy without the pickup option and things like that. But if you have the ability to go out and support those small businesses, we encourage you guys to. While this is cooking, I am going to take the opportunity to show you how I reload this. Charcoal. When you're cooking 
it hot and fast over a griddle, a lot of times you end up burning through a lot of charcoal. So what I do is I go ahead and throw that charcoal on the bottom there, take a spatula or a glove, and just kind of scoot it up underneath, move it up to your fire. Like I said, you can do that when you have a grate removed. It's really easy to tend that fire. Now these models, if you feel like it, uh, now remember oxygen always creates a hotter fire, so it's good to keep it hot, but if you kind of want to get a bake effect on these models, you can slide them over and lower the lid. It doesn't go down all the way, but you can capture some smoke inside there. We're trying to cook it hot and fast today, so I'm going to leave it open. I just put some charcoal in it, so I want to make sure that that gets as hot as possible. One other tip, and this is just a, a food safety tip, you can use it, see me use a spatula all day. I use it for the vegetables ahead of time. Raw and cooked vegetables, obviously, as long as they're clean, you don't have any bacteria problems, but I did use this for the raw meat. So I have no problem continuing to use this on the meat while it's cooking, as it's raw, but as soon as it starts to look like it's fully cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out with a clean spatula, and I'm never gonna use this spatula on those onions and peppers again, because it's had raw meat on it. Nice browning on the bottom there. Remember, as you put meat and vegetables on your griddle, it's going to start soaking up some of that heat and the temperature will drop. So whatever temperature you start on on your griddle, you may have to raise it up a little bit as you continue to cook because all that food is absorbing the heat that's coming off the metal. New spatula for my vegetables. They're doing great over here. Again, just kind of trying to keep as much contact with the metal as you can to get that browning and that crunch. That's really why we like our griddles. You get that meat contact, that crust, that thing you love on a smash burger. It's got that bite on it. That's what we use a griddle for. So the thinner you cut your meat on these, the easier it's going to be and the quicker it's going to be to cook. Again, I pulled mine right off the cooker just before this because of time constraints. But I would definitely recommend, if you have the time, go ahead and throw it in the refrigerator or even the freezer for you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Get that meat temperature cold. I know it seems counterintuitive because you're going to put it back on the heat, but it's going to tighten up that texture and make it a lot easier for you to be able to slice those real thin. These are sliced a little thicker, so it's going to take a little bit more time. We're getting there, though. Up underneath, we'll start my initial flip. Now the patio that I'm sitting on, truthfully, is not very level. So that being said, we're going to have some juices pooling. So it's always good to take a good gloved hand if you want to pick it up and drain those juices down into the grease tray. We'll put this a little bit longer, probably another two or three minutes. And then the next part is we're going to mix it all up with the vegetables. We're going to top it with some cheese and chop that up. We're going to make ourselves some smoky Philly cheese sticks. I'm going to take a minute right now to pump the fact that we're doing a virtual class with Hasty Bake uh, at Tulsa Grill Store next Wednesday night. So virtual class meeting, we're doing it over Zoom. We have uh, three or four of our best ambassadors. We love our ambassador crew. we got almost 15 ambassadors that work with us. And they go out and do stuff in the community. They help out online. They post recipes and advice and all that kind of fun stuff. If you know those guys on the grill community, definitely give a shout out to the wonderful guys. I know several of them are tuning in right now. But uh, three of them are going to be here next Wednesday night doing a virtual class over Zoom. So we posted that on our Hasty Bay Facebook page. It's available. Tickets through Eventbrite. It's twenty dollars for the class. It's going to go for about an hour and a half. And we're doing a handful of really cool, creative, unique stay-at-home recipes that only take about 15 or 20 minutes to cook at home, uh, but I guarantee it's not the normal stuff that you do at home. You know, it's all grill-based. Uh, it's going to be really neat to see these guys kind of experiment and use their grills in different ways to get some really good recipes in your hand. But it's only 20 bucks, which is about one-sixth or one-seventh of the cost of a lot of the classes that we teach around here. It is a full hour and a half, so grab your you know bottle of beer, your bottle of wine, sit down on the couch, watch some really cool recipes, some unique ways. Uh, to use your hasty bake. Again, the 20 minute recipe, so it's stuff you can make on a week time on your grill uh, for the family. It's not big, long, all day smokes. Uh, so we're really excited to have Trey and Trent, and uh, who else? Zach is joining us that night too. 
Uh, and we're just going to be hanging out and having a good time. Uh, and when you guys can join us from home. So head on over to uh, Hasty Bay Facebook page and there's a link to Eventbrite where you can pick up your ticket. We will email you the link to Zoom and you just join in from your computer from the comfort of your own home and join that virtual class. Getting real close on these. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and mix in the vegetables into the meat. And the reason being is I want to make sure all that juice that's in the vegetables is distributed throughout all the meat that's here. All those flavors that we love from caramelized onion, caramelized peppers, that good garlic seasoning that we put on with some bell pepper. Now, the thinner you cut your steak, the easier it is to take your spatula and kind of chop with it. This steak's a little heavier cut, so forgive me if this is really loud on camera. Cameron's saying hi. Hey, turn around and say hi, Cam. You get everything you need, bud? Thanks for taking care, yeah. You got your back plate? Thanks, Good to see you, brother. We're on the patio. We're live. This is cooking live. We love it. This might be a little loud on camera, so I'm sorry, but I, because this is cut a little thicker, the fun of doing live cooks, I got hit a little hard, so it might be a little metallic cover your ears. It's going to have to cover your ears, you can turn down your speakers. This also scores the meat, so if it doesn't do a full cut, it's going to score it and let even more of that juice in. Breaks it down, it's really starting to get juicy. We're going to give that about one more minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some cheese on it. Actually, we'll do it now, why not? We got some good white American cheese. Yes, if it's a Philly cheese steak, you'd be using Wiz, but we're not using Wiz, we're using white American cheese today. So you will lose some cheese on your griddles. So make sure you're using enough. If you're putting down one piece of cheese, it's kind of like garlic. One means five, and five means ten. We want these to be as cheesy as we can. It's called a cheese steak, right? It's not called a meat steak. It's called a cheese steak. We're going to make them nice and cheesy. Jennifer, go ahead and keep filming that for me while I clean up this. One more thing we can do too is, is we kind of slide some of these back. Oh, come on. Should have made some more room ahead of time, but we are going to grill the uh, the buns that we're cooking. We'll let these get a little bit more cheesy, push them back, mix them up, and put some buns on there. And why not? We like seasoning around here. It's a lot of heavy pieces of meat. Can't use enough. Come in here if you want and start chopping stuff up. It's all going to get distributed as we toss it. back up here and we're going to start doing this. This is the fun, ooey gooey, perfect part. The more you can cut in and 
get that cheese distributed, the better. Now this is why you can afford to use a little bit cheaper cut of meat like a choice grade or a prime grade is all the fat that's being brought in from that oil and from that cheese is now amply coating the meat. But you know what? If you want to use prime grade, go right ahead. I uh, won't judge you for it. I bet it will be unbelievable. Now I will say a trick that I've learned, and normally I'm a big fan of using really good high quality cheese, but when you use that processed American cheese, it just has an awesome melting effect because of the fact that it's not unprocessed cheese. Uh, it, it does a really nice coating, it kind of liquefies a little bit. Uh, I, truthfully, my favorite smash burger is maybe it's cheap, you know, processed cheese. Uh, if you like a good quality cheese, feel free to do it, but you like it like this. All right, we're going to pull this off. You have a couple options after pulling this off. Your surface is going to be a little dirty, and we will be doing a clean on this. Now, personally, for me, when I'm going to grill these or uh, toast these buns, I don't mind the surface being a little dirty because it's going to get all that meat juice in there. I have buttered them ahead of time, so we're using hoagie rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and put these buns right on that dirty surface because it's going to get all that meat juice, all that cheese, all that onion and pepper flavoring will soak it all up into meat but if you prefer to clean it ahead of time you definitely can like i said as soon as i pull these off while we're letting that meat rest which you always want to let your meat rest we'll go ahead and show you how to clean it go ahead and give it a little bit of pressure so you start to get that browning effect on your bun buns off here in a minute. I'll show y'all what we'll do next. Now one side effect of having the pan not be quite as clean is sometimes they stick a little bit. Just clean up everything is fine. Get a nice brown toast on it. hot heat you want to get it as about as hot as you can so I'm going to raise that up and when, when I hit it it's going to steam and that steam is going to start loosening up everything that's on that pan this is similar to soaking something in the stove or soaking something in the sink after you cooked on it and from there I'm just going to come in with a good scraper then all the corners scrape and pull I mean, you see how much cheese was on that thing. It's all coming right off. Now the steam is pretty hot, so if you don't, if you have sense of an arm, you know, maybe put a welding glove on or have a long sleeve shirt on. But that's about the extent that I do when I'm cleaning. I come back, the steam's still working even though there's no water. Come back and get the rest of it off there. Push it all down into that grease trough. And this thing's ready to go for another day. So what I do is I'll pull it off the fire, let that cool, and as soon as it's cool, bring a paper towel, 
wipe that whole trough out, and this thing's ready to go the next time you're ready to cook. Alice, the George Easton. will be available for curbside pickup for the next 21 seconds. Got a good even coating of onions and peppers. You want to just pile it on, right? I like to kind of put all the buns together so it catches everything. And then you can top them, and I like to cut them in half. Cut them in half, they make a great little sandwich for lunch. I'll have you come around, and this is Smoky Hasty Bake. Ha <laughs> ha! that's good. Smoky Hasty Bake. All the cheese steaks. Done smoked over the Hasty Bake. Griddled on the Hasty Bake. It's all in your grill. It's going to be going for about 25 minutes here. A lot of that's me explaining things to you. Make it about 15, 20 minutes at home. Thanks so much for joining us. If you guys like this, please subscribe to our videos. YouTube, we could love your love on YouTube. Subscribe to those, follow our videos, hit the little dinger bell at the top. So you can tune in and know when we post these things. We try to get them out every week if we can. Join us next week for our virtual class. Thanks for joining us on West Coast Wednesday.